Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we're going to go through the stock checker, and that's down in the information security certification underneath the Helmet JS part and the Python penetration testing part. We have these security projects, and we're going to go into the stock price checker, and we're going to do this one. So it has to be functionally similar to this one right here, where we can put in a symbol like tesla and get their price and then it will show up and then we can also like one of them so like let's get a new one like boeing so boe for boeing we get that one it has zero likes right now but if i like it and get the price then the likes change to one and i don't think there's a way to remove a like so like if i do it now it still has one and then we can also compare and get relative likes so if i compare tesla and boeing if i compare these uh, then we have Tesla has one more like than Boeing does. If I grab something like, I don't know, Google and try that one, then it looks like Boeing has two and Google has negative two because Google has three likes. I don't know, the relative likes thing is kind of weird, but uh, yeah, this is what we have to make and let's get started. So just go back and we're going to clone a GitHub repo and work on it locally. And then once we're done with that, if we want, we can move it up to REPL. So yeah, let's go to this GitHub repo and grab the code right here. Copy this link, go into Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you want to use. Open up the terminal, make sure you're in the right project folder. And then just do git clone and paste in that link. So there we go, we have our boilerplate project and we can rename it. I'll just rename it to stock checker. And then we can open up just that one by just doing file open and then clicking into stock checker, opening that up. And now we just have this one open. So let's see what we have here. We have routes api.js. This is where we're going to do the bulk of our coding. We have a sample env and it looks like we connect to the database. So let's grab a .env file and copy this stuff over. We can specify our port. I'll just keep it as 3000. And then our database string is the connection string from data, uh, from mongodb atlas so to find that go to mongodb they changed it to just be mongodb.com instead of mongodb atlas log in with google and then we click connect on our cluster connect your application and we grab this uh, string here go into visual studio code and paste it where the db is and then we just have to change the password and then the database name for the database name i'll do stock checker 2 and then my password I'll put in my password later. Actually, I'll do it right now, but I don't want you to see, so. Okay, so then now that we have that set up, we need to get some different dependencies. We have most of them that we need, but I also want like three other ones. And the three that we need is Mongoose, NodeFetch, and NodeMon. So just do npm install NodeMon, Mongoose, and NodeFetch. This will allow us to use fetch inside of node so that we can get our stocks. Okay, there we go. We got those three. If we go back to free code camp, we can see that since all reliable stock price APIs require an API key, they built one for us so that we can get um, stock information pretty easily. So if I go into this and I do like slash v1 slash stock symbol and I put in a symbol here like Tesla, then it will grab all the information about Tesla. It's so like it opened at 720, closed at 729, high of 737, and I think it's within like 15 minutes of the price changing. So yeah, this is how we get our information. So I'm just gonna copy this URL and put it into my API.js. And I'm just gonna comment it out for now, just so that we know this is the URL that we're supposed to use. Next thing we want to do is we want to be able to connect to our database and make our models so that we can save how many likes we have. So to do that, we need to make a couple of files. I'm going to make a DB connection file.js. This is where I'm going to put mongoose and mongoose.connect and then put in our database string from our .env file. And then we also need a models file. So we're going to go models.js. And inside this models file, we are going to put our stock schema, which has a symbol and it has the amount of likes it has. And the likes is actually a string array because we're going to put IP addresses into it instead of just a counter because one person can't like a stock more than once. And we have their 
the model and we export that model. Save that. And then inside of our server.js, we need to actually require our DB connection, otherwise it won't connect. So we have to do require dot slash DB connection. And now we should be connected to our database. So if I run this, just to do, actually I want to do yarn dev or npm dev. So we're gonna do another script here. We're gonna do dev and it's gonna be node daemon or node mon server.js so that it will continually update every time I save and rerun it. So I can do npm run dev and it will start it on port 3000 because that's what we specified in our .env file. And as you can see, it listens on that port. So we can open that up, localhost 3000. And here it is, here's our project. And right now, if we do something, it doesn't do anything because we didn't do any logic. So that's what we have to work on. Let's go into api.js. We need to require a couple of things. We need to require the stock model and we need to require fetch from node fetch. This will allow us to use fetch to grab from this API. So yeah, inside this function, we can get our information from rec.body or rec.query actually. And we grab the stock symbol and it's called stock in this case. And we grab like and like is either true or false. And we have to do stuff with this information. First thing I wanna do is have a separate function for getting a stock. And I do that with this function, async function get stock. It has to be async because we're doing a fetch and it takes time to fetch a resource. So we fetch that stock symbol and then we await the response.json and we grab the symbol and we grab the latest price. So if I go back to this where we grab Tesla and we see latest price, latest price, this is what we're grabbing from that information. And we're also grabbing the symbol and then returning them. So then we want to use that inside of this app.route. And because this is async, we also need this function to be async. So we're gonna do function async. And then we're going to use that function, get stock. We're gonna do await, get stock, and we're gonna grab the latest price and the symbol out of that. If there's no symbol, then we just return stock data likes. And then if we like it, then it's one, otherwise it's zero. I can show you that they did that in theirs. It's so like if I do a random stock and get the price, then it just says stock data like zero. But if I do like, then it has likes of one. It's kind of weird, but yeah, that's what they return. So that's what I'm going to return. Now we need to save this stock inside of our database, as well as the amount of likes it has. And then we also have to return information about the stock. So I'm going to have another function up, up at the top to handle this stuff. And it's going to be called save stock. And basically this one is going to find a stock. And I also need a couple more functions for this one to work. Create stock and find stock. But it all comes down to the save stock. So first we try and find a stock and we pass in that um, symbol. If we find one, then it will return it. And then we say if we found one, or if we didn't find one, then we need to create it into our database. So then we create this stock uh, by making it a new stock model. And then we pass in the stock and we pass in the IP address. And the way we get the IP address is in rec.ip. And then we save it and then it's in our database. And we return the saved um, stock. Otherwise, if we do already have it, then we just um, find if the IP is in there or not. If it's a different IP, then we push on that IP so that it will have more likes. And then we save that stock. So now I want to use this save stock function. So we await save stock and we pass in all the information we need. So we grab the IP address with rec.ip and then we, re we can return our JSON, rec.json and our stock symbol, our price and our likes, which is the likes.length. So if I save this, um, it crashes. Await is only valid inside an async function. Okay, so for some reason it's not picking up this async. I think it's because I have to put async in front of function and save that. And I'm missing a parenthesis. All right, there we go. And now it's listening on port 3000 again. And let's go into ours, localhost 3000. And let's get the price of Tesla. And there we go. We got our stock Tesla price 729.4 likes of zero. And inside of our MongoDB Atlas, we can go to collections, 
go into our stock checker two stocks and we have our Tesla symbol and we have an array of likes that's empty right now. But if I go back in here and I like it, so if I like Tesla, get price, then likes changes to one. And inside of here, if I refresh it, then we should have likes be an array of one as well. So there we go. Next thing we have to do is we have to handle when we use compare and get relative likes. So in this case, there's gonna be two stocks that come in instead of just one. And we can check that by checking if the stock query is an array instead of just one symbol. So if we do that, we're gonna do if array dot is array, and then we pass in the stock, then we want to console.log the stock, but we actually wanna do a lot more than that inside of here. We actually have to get both stocks with this get stock function. So we do that with get stock and we get the stock zero, or the first index, and then we get the second index with this one, and then we change the names of symbol and latest price to symbol two and latest price two. And then we save these stocks, we save stock zero and stock one, pass in the likes and the IP. And then we start constructing our stock data array. Basically, if there's no symbol, then we just have rel likes on there. Otherwise, we push in the symbol and the price and the rel likes. And we do the same thing for symbol two, except use all second stock uh, data points, like symbol two and latest price two. And then all we have to do is do res.json stock data and then return out of it once we do that. So if I save this, we can try testing it out. If I put in Tesla and first Majestic, get the price. There we have Tesla, price 729, relative likes one. And then we have first Majestic, 16.22, relative likes negative one. So it looks like it's working. And also it, this stuff should be in our database now, or at least uh, first Majestic as well now. So if I refresh this, we have our AG symbol. So it's looking like it, it works, cool. Next thing we have to do is we have to do with the tests, our functional tests, we need like five of these. So if we go to free code camp, these are the tests that we need. We need to view one stock. We need to view one stock and like it. We need to view the same stock and like it again. We need to view two stocks and view two stocks and like them. So I'll just copy over what I have. What we do is we do a get request to our API slash stock prices, and then we set content type application JSON. I don't know if that's necessary, but I did it anyways. And then we do dot query and we pass in stock of Tesla. If we want to like it, then we do uh, like true. And then we get back in our res.body and we make sure we get Tesla and we make sure that Tesla has a price. And then we do the same thing for gold, which is Barrett gold. <laughs> and we check that Barrett gold has a price as well and that it has one like when we like it. And then we do view the same stock and like it again. So we do that one again, make sure it still has one like. And then we view two stocks. This time we grab the first stock and we make sure it's Amazon. And then we grab the second one and we make sure it's uh, AT&T and make sure they both have prices. And then we like them as well. And then we make sure they have relative likes and we pass in like of true. So those are our tests and we can run them if we change the .env uh, node env to not be commented out. So I can change that quick. And also if you change something in your .env file, you actually have to restart it. So you just do control C and then npm run dev again. And now it's running our tests and there we go. They passed, all five of them passed. So that's looking good. Let's try testing this out inside of FreeCodeCamp. Let's grab our URL, localhost 3000. When we actually provide the link, we want to make sure it's an external link or a publicly visible URL. But in this case, it's just local. So I completed it and all of them pass except for this one. We have to set the content security policies to only allow loading of scripts and CSS from your server. And I can do this pretty easily, but it might break things, I'm not sure. So let's take a look at how to do this. If we go into our server.js, uh, we actually have helmet installed, right? Helmet, and this is what we need to use to set our content security policy. And we're gonna set it inside of server.js. What we have to do is we have to first require helmet. So const helmet equals require helmet. And then we have to add middleware to set our content security policy. And we do that with app.use. 
and we do helmet.content security policy, pass in a directives object, and then we set our default source to self, our script source to self, and also I added this jQuery um, CDN as well. I don't know if it's necessary, but I added it anyways. And then we have our style source as self as well. And if I save this, it might break our application. I'm not sure. For some reason, it breaks it. I don't know why, but maybe it will, maybe it won't. I really haven't figured it out. So let's save that. It will run our tests again, but we can check our stock price checker and refresh this. And looks like it's still working. Sweet. Grab Tesla, get its price, and there we go. We have our price and our likes, and we can try testing this out again inside of FreeCodeCamp, and it should pass all the tests now. So complete the project, test completed, and we completed all of them. Now it doesn't move on because we need to submit our GitHub link and our publicly visible URL. But yeah, should not be too difficult to put it into a publicly visible URL. To get it up on GitHub at least, um, we can do that quick, I guess. So to get it on GitHub, we go to our GitHub account. Here's mine. And we need to make a new repository. And the repository name will be Stock Checker Free Code Camp. Description optional. It'll be public and create repository. And we just have to follow these commands. And actually, I think we have to remove the one that we got it from first. So I think we do that with git remove remote origin, I believe. Nope, git, um, git remote remove origin. Maybe just switch those up. Okay, so yeah, that git remote remove origin, I think worked. And we need to add a, a remote. So we're going to do git remote add, or let's see here. Yeah, we need to do git remote add origin and then our URL for GitHub. So we're gonna add that in. Git remote add origin. Hopefully y'all can see that. But yeah, we're gonna add that origin in there and then we're gonna do git add all, git commit dash M and we'll say first commit. And then we're gonna do git push, git push origin or just do git push. And then yeah, just do this git push setup stream origin go mix, I guess. Or we can change that to be a different branch. But I guess I'll just do this for now, because why not? And then it will push it up to our repo. So now it's on GitHub. We can refresh this, and there we go. Here it is. It still has our contributors on here, which is fine, I guess. But yeah, it should have all of our different code now. So in mpi.js, this is what we just wrote. And we can share this GitHub link onto free code camp. Put the GitHub link here, complete it, but yeah. Right now it's not running and I also need a publicly visible app URL. And to do that, probably just use REPL and just like copy the files over. And there might be one thing that doesn't work, but just looking around on the internet should uh, help you find the answer to that. Otherwise, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next up, we have the anonymous message board which is definitely a little bit harder than doing the stock price checker but um, we're probably going to be using a lot of sub documents for this one as well because we have to post to a thread or post to a board and then there's a thread and then the thread has different replies on it but yeah i'll get more into it in that video otherwise if you like the video give it a like subscribe down below leave a comment um, i read all the comments and i will see you next time see ya